art, comedy, pop culture, and much more. You're listening to ACPN. Hello, young swim cast citizens. Space Ghost here, uh, a.k.a. George Lowe, inviting you in for all of the creamy, enjoyable listening goodness. Let's ladle some up right now, shall we? Everybody, it's that time again. Time for another long-awaited swim cast. That's right. We're all here. John Jay, the leader, the Leonardo, if you will. No, I like that. Uh, I've always Jason. liked Donatello. Shut up. Hi. You, you can be Donatello then. That's thank the, you. I am always Donatello. I, I have to be. I, I have to be. I'm. You know. I always like Donatello. I don't know. It's it's the it's the stick. And it's the the brain and the intelligence. I always liked Raphael. Like, none of the boys would play Ninja Turtles with me because I was a girl. They were like, you can be Irma. And I think I cried. Aww. Because who wants to be Irma? No, they didn't want you to be April? They had an April. (sighs) Bastards. My wife liked uh, Raphael, too. Anyway, you were saying, Trish, I'm sorry. (laughs) Jason here. Jason, which Ninja Turtle are you? I don't know. I didn't watch Ninja Turtles. <laughs> what? None, I never watched Ninja Turtles. None of none of the iterations, not even the, the newer ones with, like, Seth Green as Leonardo. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> Seth Green as Leonardo. Or maybe he was uh, he was one of them. I forget. I, there was one there was one of the more recent ones where I'm like, Seth Green is doing the voice of the turtle? That's no, wild. Uh, no, he was he was Leonardo in the 2012 to 2017 version. Okay. Anyway. Um, anyway. But it is that time again. Hi, yeah. Um, Welcome, Swimcast. Uh, yeah. Ha- happy belated, happy belated 15th anniversary. Thanks. Yeah. I guess I should be well. saying that to you because you're the you're kind of the starter of of all of this goodness i i mean i guess uh you know 15 over 15 years ago i said why isn't there a podcast about well first i said why isn't there a podcast about aqua teen because i'm apparently a big thing in aqua teen so says the cast and crew and mm-hmm. you know with the help of a couple of people we, we started it and it was kind of fun enjoyable and Kept doing it and found out that and you Aqu- brought some broad onto the podcast and brought some broad onto the podcast. But we also, what I was going to say was, we also figured out that Aqua Teen was a little too broad of a subject mm-hmm. to cover. So we started doing Adult Swim, and then you know from there, grew and it grew and it grew, and then it shrank mm-hmm. because people got, people got lives and people got to pay actual bills with actual money. So yeah. now, now we potentially bring you one, maybe two or three episodes a year. <laughs> and this is that yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Although I shouldn't complain because according to stats that I keep getting, we're still getting numbers in different countries. Yeah. So I'd like to give a, a real shout out to our friends over there in Turkey. <laughs> and Mexico. And Mexico. And what was the other one? You said the Netherlands, too. Oh, yeah, Netherlands, too. A little bit. A little bit. Let me look. Let me double check in, in pod track right now while we're talking. But, um, yeah, Swimcast is... <laughs> Our last episode we did, we covered uh, the whole HBO Max slash uh, Warner, Brother, Warner Media merger, which I'm sure we'll be getting into something similar in a few minutes. But uh, we... 
aired that in May of last year, and apparently it's still getting numbers for some reason. <laughs> Wow. And, it, and is getting them. In, oh, this one's. Oh, wow. Russia's listening to us. Hello, Russia. Russia. Sorry, sorry. Your country is uh, ass. Your government is assholes. Oh, two percent in Saudi Arabia. Sorry, your king is an asshole who likes to kill journalists. Yeah. Yeah. Very and, sad. No, but apparently the the other the charitable stuff that I get said Turkey and. Mexico and the the Netherlands, so and a little teeny tiny bit in the U.S. Because I guess some people, you know, start to realize after a while. Oh, hey, there's still a podcast out there about Adult Swim. Because yeah. there, there started to be other ones. I mean, there were they weren't doing the same stuff that we generally do. There was one podcast that I remain nameless with people that didn't seem very friendly or generous. And then Adult Swim tried to do their own podcast, which in typical Warner Media slash Warner whatever at this point, decided not to and fired all their staff. Oh, great. And then, you know, there are other podcasts out there that do generalize like we were trying to originally. I mean, props to Ronnie over at uh, the Aqua Teen Hunger Force podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to link him in the show notes. But, I mean, we're... Technically, I guess the the roundabout thing I was trying to stay, say is, you know, we're kind of still here for you. Uh, it's just unfortunate love we can't. You. We love you. We just can't do this every week at the current, you know, volume just because. And, and to be honest, I wouldn't want to either because we could give you a show every week and then we'd either burn out or people we wouldn't be giving them the proper content i guess yeah i really feel like we started to burn out after a while and mm. it's like i think you know this podcast is important in, yes. in a way um and i didn't i i didn't want it to become a chore yes as does as it, as podcasts usually become i mean uh, in the interim, my wife started a romance podcast, which she's been on hiatus now because they were doing one every week. And her uh, co-host has a lot of uh, adulting stuff to do. And my wife tends to have similar, not not similar, but some adulting to do herself. And they, you know, they've been off for a while. And to her point, she said, we, we want to make sure we're giving quality over quantity. Because mm-hmm. I mean, this is the kind of show we could have we could have been doing it, you know, more consistently and and been at like, oh, this is the 500th episode of the show. I mean, I'm I'm content with this being the 181st episode. And I, I'd a re- lot of episodes. I yeah. mean, in 15 years, you. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess guess what I'm saying is, if people really wanted this show to be more than just one potential potentially more episodes a year i mean I- i'll say it right now if you want to email us podcasts at acpnet.net and i'll put it in the show notes if you want to you know audition for us and give us reasons why you would be a, a great asset to the show and then you know we'll just either you know rotate people in and out you know, Trish doesn't have to be here. I, I honestly, I don't have to be the linchpin for for every show going forward. I don't mind taking a step back if people want to contribute. And I don't know. I I think you need to be on the show. You're kind of the heart and soul. Mm. I don't know. I'd be I'd be content with not doing an episode or two. And I think there were like a couple where I where I wasn't on consistently. I don't know. But, um, you know, because the, the other half of this, and I've said this on, on, like, the last few episodes, is, and I know we kind of said it uh, before we started recording, we don't watch consistent Adult Swim that we know everything that's going on. We're just, I, I compiled as much news as I could, and it seems like we have most of it under control this week. But, um, what? I don't know. I I watch Adult Swim a lot, actually. 
Uh, I I'm really into Bird Girl because the theme song is Oh my God Oh my God Oh my God Oh my God Oh my God, and that's pretty much what runs through my head every day. Who's and, the girl who saves the world? And, and also, as you pointed out to me, and I can't stop looking, she has a black upper lip. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get over that either. It just, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. Well, you pointed that out to me, and now I can't unsee it. I guess in a roundabout way, you know, we're here. We don't do this as much for reasons we just explained, and we're going to do it now because we feel it's it's important to people who have listened and passed, especially if you're still listening to the same episode from last year at, in different countries. <laughs> Can I just really quick point out that we have a Discord? Uh, we have Carl's Pool. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. We talk about Adult Swim in there. We talk about a lot of things in there. Uh, we talk about being old people with butt problems. So if you love Adult Swim, if you love Carl, if you love his pool, if you or, have butt problems. Or if you, like, if you like Adult Swim, but you have no idea how to use Discord or just lurk in a chat and not say hello. Uh, you can stick around for about a month, and then I'll, uh, you know, just purge you out of the server. Don't say that. That that makes people not want to come. Well, then they won't lurk. <laughs> right. Let's put it this way. If you genuinely want to chat with us about Adult Swim, you can join our Discord. And if you have butt problems, that's okay, too. Tell us about them. Yes, Old people with butt problems. Yeah, it says right there. It's a generalized chat, but we also discuss Adult Swim from time to time. Yeah. As as will we right now. Yeah. Um. What do you want to talk about? God, I'm saying um, just like every other word in this fucking podcast. Um. So I guess there's been a lot of things that have happened since we've been gone the last year. The. 12 to 14 months. <laughs> and I guess the biggest news is we had we had a merger last year that went through. And then the merger decided to merge again. So we had the whole big thing last year was, okay, well, AT&T bought Time Warner and was merging it into this big conglomerate called Warner Media. And then apparently... AT&T, in their infinite or finite wisdom, decided, well, we're going to spin off Warner Media, but also we're going to acquire Discovery uh, Networks, which is basically Discovery Channel, Learning Channel, Food Network. Uh, Learning Channel's the best with all the 90 Day Fiancés. Yeah, I I, I like how Learning Channel actually became, was learning originally, was like... And educational stuff, and then they went, "Hey, we're gonna have a, a show about a family of eight where the husband's uh, a douche, and the wife ends up divorcing him, and then we'll cancel the show because it's not good." No, no, she had her own show after that. Oh, she did. I don't know. I didn't watch eight it. Plus eight. Yeah. I didn't want. I I don't watch. That's not my cup of tea. You know, Honey Boo Boo and. Uh, 90 Day Fiance. I love Honey Boo Boo, but I like train wrecks. I like 90 Day Fiance. I love 90 Day Fiance. When Adam has to go down to work for a few days, that's all I do is catch up on 90 Day Fiance because it's like, I, I don't know, it's just a complete train wreck. Some of it is too cringeworthy for me, but yeah. most of it is just so. beautiful. Horrible situations. Right. But, yeah, Discovery so, Network and WB merged. Yep, and they said uh, at and I, I don't know the exact minutia, but, like, Warner Media and Discovery got together, and now they're Warner Brothers Discovery. And it's got us concerned because when they merged everything into Warner Media and made HBO Max kind of the linchpin of everything, there were a lot of changes. You know, we had... Venture Brothers getting canceled and staff being terminated and this and that. So we're a little reluctant to believe that there's 
well, I guess at the moment, good stuff coming. Because it sounds like there's good stuff coming, but then at the same time, we know from the last one that... Uh, that things are in flux. In fact, uh, someone had sent me a quote from Jason DeMarco, who uh, he was... Well, he, I think he's still in charge of Toonami, but he also got promoted recently, where he basically said, we have it... I think this was for Toonami in general, but it sounds like it's Adult Swim and other networks in that family proper. He says, we have a ton of plans. For now, our new bosses have sort of put everything on hold across the company as they assess what what they want us all to do. We know it looks to fans like we're just sitting around, but we literally can't do much right now, and money is very tight, too. Well, they lost the AT&T cash cow, so... Now, you know, I'm sure they're making... I know, and we'll talk about this later, that there's been a lot of movement in the what they call the T-Network, so TNT, TBS, uh, True TV, have uh, gutted their content recently. And it seems like Adult Swim's making some changes, uh, and that, uh, Trish, is to your first talking point, is that they cut Joe Perra's show. I know. I'm really sad. Like, I thought Joe Perra was great. Um, I put on the document that... Your soothing late night show will live on in our hearts and dreams and HBO Max streaming forever. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed watching it. It made me very calm, but it was very entertaining at the same time. Yeah. My, my thing is I, I've only watched a couple of episodes and I kind of wanted to after his guest spot on Bob's Burgers. And it seems pretty silly because I I feel like the whole thing is just his his voice and his cadence of talking. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even I don't... want to do an imitation, and and the fact that it, it's just it's that it seemed to fit with that whole typical Adult Swim absurdity. Yeah. Adam watches this guy who um, is like he'll recreate colonial times like they built a log cabin he cooks colonial food um adam actually got a really cool pork chop recipe from him uh but joe para has been on several of his youtube shows on his colonial youtube channel and it it's really cool watching him he doesn't break character hmm even even in the episode of Bob's, it was the same. He seemed like the same character. Mm-hmm. It's like one of those uh, kind of going back like 40, 50 years, the whole uh, Andy Kaufman as Tony Clifton. Yeah. Or uh, who am I thinking of? I was thinking I had another name in my head. Well, I mean, there's Emo Phillips, but that's that's more of a, of a gag than a character, I think. The guy who voiced uh, Shannon on home movies. Which one was Shannon? The one who was always stealing shit. Mm-hmm. Oh my we god. Got oh Shannon. We got Shannon. <laughs> oh, was he the bully? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. We have to remind Trisha of old Adult Swim stuff sometimes. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, right. remind, we'll remind her again of someone she talked to. Since, since I started working, my memory's gotten really bad because... I have to memorize the names of every single person that comes into my work. Oh. And it's just like, oh so, my god. So you've basically been Johnny Mnemonic. You, you lost memory. You lost adult swim information to adulting information. Yeah. Oh, god. Help me if I ever get to that point. Although although I've been losing words lately. <laughs> oh no. I'm like, I'm like what is this? What, what do they call <clears throat> this thing? Are you like Uncle Barry? You got dementia? Oh, God. Dementia. I hope not. Uncle John, is your dementia acting up? Oh, no. His dementia's flaring up. <laughs> we'll talk about uh, that in a little bit. So, yeah. So, yeah, um, I mean, anything else about Joe Parra? I just... I, I don't even know, man. I'm just really sad. Jason, do you ever watch Joe Parra? Nope. 
Oh, really? That seems like something that'd be up your alley. I I just haven't watched any of the newer shows in yeah, a I, long time. Besides, I, uh, smiling but, friends. Besides, stuff. smiling. Fr- yeah, I feel like that's yeah. that's been the the gist of what what we've been doing is you know it's it's not like we're not watching Adult Swim. It's that we haven't been watching the right stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, and I don't really watch much television in general these days. Yeah, and I think that's part of it too. Like with Smiling Friends, uh, someone had a Discord watch party and said, "Oh, let's watch this one episode," and I'm like, "Oh, I'm hooked on this now because I already like Michael Cusack stuff, and now this show has me hooked. So let me go watch the rest of it. It's on HBO Max. So obviously." With the advent of all these streaming companies like HBO Max, it's given a lot of people another avenue where it's like, well, why are you going to wait or DVR something on TV when you could just watch it in bulk on the streaming app? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. (laughs) The other thing I wanted to mention is that Joe Parra might not be the last uh, on the chopping block, unfortunately, because there's rumors that either or of the Shivering Truth and or Ballmasters might be next. The Shivering Truth was too much for me. I never... I, that's another one I never watched. I don't know anything about it. I, I think I watched an episode or two of that, and it was... It's pretty fun. Uh, it's I think that's PFR. Is it, it's yeah. super, is it super PFR? creepy. See, that's, that's something I would watch. Yeah, it's like it's it's super creepy and it's definitely it, it's very PFR. Hmm. And I enjoyed what I saw of it. I'm surprised that if if it is them that and Ballmasters, I would say too. I'm yeah, surprised they're still around. around. I I so. love Ballmasters. Did I watch the last season? I know I put I put it on I, I bought it on Vudu, and they have it on, but I don't think I ended up finishing it. But. Christy Caracas is another one. Anything he touches is gold. Mm-hmm. I mean, Super Jail was just one of the... the mo- I mean, it started out, it was like, oh, Super Jail is, is a lot like Metalocalypse, but because of all the, the ultra-violence and everything, but his animation style is just... <laughs> I can't explain it. it it's very fluid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even with the, with the fights in Super Jail, it's like it goes from one thing to another without even like missing a beat. And it seems like he, I think I said this when we discussed Ballmasters originally, uh, for those who want to go back in our archives, the fact that it seems like he really honed his craft. Because I know he, he went back to school, I think, at, in uh, Rhode Island, and I think he honed a lot of his craft because it, it shows like if you watch Ballmasters and you watch Super Jail, there's definitely... Uh, an upgrade to his style of even even the fact that it's kind of more of an anime style, which I think was part of the intent. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I I I, I hope I hope they're not done with Ballmasters. But at the same time, if if Christy goes on to doing something else for Swim, that would be to their advantage. Mm-hmm. But uh. And then, uh, unrelated. Oh, yeah. You're all in Atlanta. Yeah, that kind of bums me out, because that was a staple in Atlanta every time I went to Dragon Con and, and paid them a visit, was they have this, for those who don't know, they have they had this Jagunda mural out front of the building, even though the entrance of the building is in the back by the parking lot. <laughs> but in the front, they had this whole mural where they dedicated, like, X amount of space to one of every, basically every single show that was produced by adult swim like it started with space ghost and they tell you space ghost uh established 1995 6 or 95 whenever it was and then it goes up from there it goes aqua teen brack shows uh c lab birdman and then it goes more you know every single like basically every single show if not every single show. So it's like Fat Guy Stuck in Internet, Lucy Daughter of the Devil, uh, Frisky Dingo, uh, Moral Oral. And each one has their own respective, you know, picture and date. 
and they had it there for the longest time and they were adding on more and more even to the even to the point that they were continuing the mural in the back lot where the entrance was and i guess for one reason or another i know the last time i went there they were in the midst of building a a skyscraper next door so that's Hmm. problem that was probably part of the reasoning i don't think it i don't think it had to do anything with hbo max or warner discovery it sounds like it was probably more of a uh like what a th- see this is this is what this is where I am in life. I don't remember the word uh de zoning, rezoning, I guess you could call it. That makes sense. Where hey, this mural's in our way, we're knocking it down, we need to build, you know, a hotel for who who knows what. A hotel for parakeets. Or, you know, a thousand uh, foot thousand stories of uh, Starbucks <laughs> and get the, get this fucking mural out of our way. Uh, it sounds like it's more like that than, than anything else. Yeah. 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 It sucks because uh, I've never been to Atlanta and that, if I ever went that was one of the things I wanted to go see. So I'm never going to get to see it and that sucks. But Yeah. I mean at least, you, do? At least you got like videos you can you know you could watch i think i might have taken a video or two when i used to go out there but i mean you know at least there's people online that are like cataloging it so that's kind of cool here i'll post i'll post uh part of it in the show notes i actually found it while we were talking this is kind of the idea for everyone here and you, and you can tell there was some there, there must have been something next door. Well, I know they were they were building a hotel, and then they, this property above it must not be owned by Turner or someone else bought it out of them. Who knows? It's it's Atlanta, it's Georgia too. So who knows? Probably have different <laughs> rezoning laws, and who knows what. But rest in peace, mural. So hopefully that's that's the rest of the bad news that have that has happened <laughs> during during our little hiatus in the last year. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of other news that's happened since we've been gone, and I guess the first thing that we'll probably gloss over because I don't think any of us have any interest is that the Adult Swim Festival is coming to Philly next month. Hmm. Man, I would go if I could. I thought about it. But I'd rather save my money and go to convention. Yeah, I mean that's a fair point. That and that's so. similar to where I am, I think, at this point. But the on the other hand, I've been to, I, I've been told by one or two people that I am quote unquote boring and quiet. Therefore, uh, a festival wouldn't be in my favor. Plus, that really isn't too much of my scene. I, I would probably, if I were to go, I would probably go more for the panels. And the only panel I'm remotely yeah. interested in is the Aqua Teen one. Yeah. And I'm not going to pay out the nose just to travel down there and see a panel that is prob- I would imagine they're probably going to stream it since they have been the last couple of years. Hey, hopefully. Yeah. So, I mean, the only, the only way I-, I could see myself going down there is if someone reached out to me and said, hey want to go we'll get you in for free because you know that that's my language is free (laughs) free is a good language Mm. yeah especially especially if i'm within prox like philly isn't like especially that i have a hybrid car (laughs) because i'm a hybrid guy um it isn't that bad of a trek but again i'm not gonna it's kind of like it's kind of like why i stopped going to san diego is it's too much Risk for little reward. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to fly all the way out, spend a kajillion dollars to go to San Diego for a little bit of inf- a little bit of t- entertainment from Adult Swim that I could get in my own house for free. <laughs> so, not trying to downplay the festival. I'm sure everyone's going to have a cool time because this is the first one they're doing live since the pandemic. But, yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, again, free, 
yes, I would go in a heartbeat. Uh, to buy tickets? No. <laughs> I, I, I I I was I'm I was interested because I mean I would go to the concerts and stuff like that too. I forget who's playing, but I feel well, like there was at least one artist that sounded good. Well, let's let's but look, like let's look it up. Yeah, might as well. And but like, oh, RTJ is going. Oh well, yeah, that was a major one of them, actually. I guess because I do love Run the Jewels. I don't know. Uh, I don't know too much of them, but what I've heard, I enjoy. They're great. I've. S- they're doing five. Sh- five. Oh, Tierra Whack also. Death Clock. Death Clock is coming back, so that's. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to see if they if they announce anything as far Hop as the along. movie. Yeah. Oh, all the panels are sold out already. So if I yeah. win, it would only be concerts. Yep. Uh, oh, oh, there's a Smiling Friends. Smiling panel Friends, too. Aqua Teen, and Rick and Morty, and I wonder if. Everyone's going to be there. Oh, yeah, I can't even get into Ticketmaster. Thanks, VPN. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so. But, I don't know. It's, for me, it's like I don't drive. Mm. So it's either, it's either I uh, would have to rely on having uh, someone drive me or rely on friends coming. Or public transportation. Or uh, take a bus down. Mm. And that's does not sound like something I want to do or get to ne- or so. get to the city and take Amtrak down. Yeah. And fuck so, that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you when I, when I was younger, I, I, you know, I was hesitant when I was really young. And then around the time adults swim started becoming relevant, I kind of got the bug to, to go down, especially when it was cheaper stuff, like to go like, I think my first venture down was like the big thing that that got me into doing the Adult Swim, you know, news, uh, swimcast, podcast kind of stuff. Was the the shows that Dana used to do in Philly, and it's like mm. okay, it's like a, a ten fifteen dollars show to see him, and and you go down there for one night, and you know it wasn't it wasn't terrible. I got a, I think I got a hotel room for like a hundred dollars. And then I got ended up getting the train. I think was like fifty, maybe less. I don't know. It, w- it wasn't. It wasn't a whole lot of money. And that was one of those deals where it was like the the risk was less than the reward. That that's yeah. what that's what I always compare it to. Because like I said, San Diego going the first couple of years was fine, and then when it became a thing where okay, I'm going to Dragon Con and I'm going to San Diego and I'm hemorrhaging money that, that I can't even afford I, to compose. <laughs> I don't think I could ever justify going to San Diego. I mean, like, I always... At all. I always tell people, if you really want to experience it, go once, and that's it. And that was back yeah. That was back before they started using the hotels. Yeah, I, I just... It's like... It doesn't... It's, it's, it's not worth it now. Because especially... With the conventions that we have here, it's fine. Well, just staying in New York and going here, you know, yeah, I, I agree because they haven't. They keep expanding the Javits Center, so it's not a problem. For yeah. Them. Well, I mean, I was at the Javits last year for two different for for two cons. Mm-hmm. I went for New York Comic Con because I went for like two days, and I went to Anime NYC. Mm-hmm. And the new building at the Javits is very nice. Which was the one that, uh, or was it both that they found some a patient with? Uh, uh, the Om- the Omicron guy was uh, was Anime NYC, oh. <laughs> which there was no spread from that. No one caught it from oh, that's, him. That's good. Which is fascinating. Like like he it, it's uh, one guy had it, and they went all out with the tracking and tracing. I got like phone calls and texts and emails, like tons of them. Hmm. I got tested. Everyone I know who went with me got tested, and I think like a month or so later, um. They came out and said that basically the amount of spread uh, at the convention was slim to nothing. That's good because the 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 Javits is a well ventilated place. Mm-hmm. The amount of ma- masks that were at, that were on people's faces at Anime NYC was pretty much everybody, unless they were stopped to eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was a well run convention outside of. Like, when you were inside, it was well-run. Outside, it was a fucking disaster, because they had some some real shit shows of a line oh, for the first day. 
like uh, I had some friends that came with, and the show started at 1 p.m. Uh, on the Friday. And because of the way that they set up the lines with vax checks and everything like that, they had like two people doing vaccination checks with one entrance and a line that went like three, four blocks down away from the Javits. And that's pretty far. And uh, they didn't get into like almost 4 p.m. Hmm. And I, I went the day before, got my vax checked on, and I was in the front door at like 12.30. And they, 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 almost, they almost caused a stampede by opening up an extra door at one point. I think they gave up on vaccination checks at some point. But outside of that, it was everybody was careful when it came to COVID stuff at that show. Hmm. Which is more than can be said for Anime Expo, which was last weekend in, in, in LA at the same building that Comic-Con is at. Uh, which could have been probably the worst COVID hotspot that any va- any convention will ever be. Holy crap. What? That was the one in LA? Yeah, uh, that was, yes. Anime Expo was last weekend. <laughs> and, uh, there were some there were some people talking about the fact that the uh, the artist alley building, mm. the CO two levels were massively unhealthy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to a point where they were urging everybody who was in the building in the artist alley building at all to be tested. Oh wow! Because it was bad. It was really bad. They almost they also they also stopped letting ticketed people in during the first day because the fire marshal had them stop because they sold so many tickets. It's ridiculous. So at least things that happen at the Javits, you know, function properly. That's why I could never justify going to San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. And also we have New York Comic-Con, which it sounds like, on the flip side, it sounds like they had their shit together last year. Because I was seeing seeing and hearing stuff where it was like uh, they were – they let limited amount of people get tickets Mm -hmm. and – they were keeping everything spread out pretty good, and they were, they were kind of turning away certain. Uh, I guess the bigger uh, companies didn't go. Some of them. Yeah, I I was there, and um, it was weird. It was a weird show because it was pretty empty in terms of uh, some of the booths and stuff like that. There was actually just a a huge gap in the floor where there was nothing. They just put a bunch of trash cans there. Wow. And that's kind of surreal when you go to New York, when you've been going to New York Comic Con for so long and you see the floors all, always filled with like, you know, all of the, uh, all the different booths, all the big vendors and stuff like that. But so many people didn't go. Mm. There's like an entire section of the floor that I'm used to like, uh, you know, some of the video game companies being at, and instead it was just a giant Dragon Ball booth. <laughs> um, but it was a, it was definitely the attendance was definitely low because it was on, uh, low on purpose. Um, I saw more mask wearing at Anime NYC than I did at New York Comic Con. I will say, they they weren't as good about it at at, at New York Comic Con, but. It was a much smaller convention that year. It's actually kind of nice. Because it's usually just chaos. And especially on certain days, you can't get through the floor. Mm. But it wasn't bad. They know what they're doing. That's good. I was actually, as you were talking, I was considering applying for a press application for New York Comic Con. But I don't think I can. Because we haven't mm. done too much in a while. Yeah. <sighs> well, we start... Yeah, true. I think that's the only way I'd go this year is if we did press free. I'm probably not. Yeah, I don't know if I want to pay to go to New York Comic Con this year. Yeah, I know we were supposed to. We, we, we were supposed to have a site built. Uh, I won't say by whom, but he kind of dropped the ball. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm waiting to hear if his if because he's trying to get a site built for his. Uh, for his press organization, which will also remain nameless right now because I don't want to feel like I'm shitting on him for not having a, a website. But he did promise a website because I don't have a time. I don't really have the time to do a website myself. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. So Adult Swim, whatchamacallit, festival. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's happening. It's happening. Mm-hmm. None of us are going. Yep. Death Clock is going to perform. We don't know if they're going to talk mm-hmm. about new Death Clock stuff. Aqua Teen's going to have a panel. 
Smile, smiling friends. Smiling friends. Probably, um, if I had to guess, Smiling Friends season two, prob- they'll probably reiterate something from San Diego. And then Aqua Teen will have something else. And then maybe Rick and Morty will show something from the Vindicators. Since that's going to be a panel at San Diego. So, I guess we'll find out at some, you know, some way, somehow. Mm Mm-hmm. The end. (laughs) Um, what else is newsworthy? Uh, Final Space, which, unfortunately, I I never got into Final Space, but I know that's been a a hot-button issue because of how it ended, and the creator of that started his own Kickstarter to try and get I guess a resolution. It sounds, it, it's funny because it sounds a lot similar to, and I don't know Olan Rogers at all. I know he works for Conan, so he's probably a cool dude because everyone we've spoken to on the show who wrote for Conan previously is a cool dude. Hmm. So I don't know the reasoning behind the cancellation. Maybe it was a, a result of Warner and Warner Media and AT&T and Discovery and whoever else. Uh, but it sounds a lot, it sounds parallel to me with when Brendan Small was trying to, uh, get Galacticon going and Galacticon was supposed to be like the, allegedly the follow-up slash resolution to the end of Death Clock, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I never, I never read or watched anything Galacticon related, so I don't know. And now, and now, Bren, Brendan's getting, getting his shot at finishing up Death Clock finally. So yeah, that's she's exciting. What we talk about is, uh, you know, coming up on HBO Max. We've got yeah, we yeah, we'll we'll talk about that after. Uh, well, we'll talk about that in the other news because we got a couple of pieces there. Um. And but although speaking of HBO Max, uh, someone <coughs> said, someone had reached out to HBO Max because apparently they've removed Final, Final Space from their content, and the answer they got was interesting because HBO Max was like we're con- more or less saying we're removing the TBS TNT content, so it's kind of like well why would you do that? You're not you're not making room because people are. If they're making room for more content to add, then why do you have Loiter Squad <laughs> on? I'm sorry to single out that one show, and it's, <coughs> but I can't imagine there's like a rush of people watching Loiter Squad or like uh, I love them, but I don't see a lot. I, I can't imagine a lot of people are flocking to Eagle Heart or Delocated to watch content or mostly for millennials or Xavier, Xavier. you know, so to that point, if, if you're removing stuff to add stuff, then why are you removing final space? That doesn't make sense to me. So my rationale is because someone pointed out that it wasn't just final space. It's also a lot of the TBS TNT content. So the only thing, thing I could think of is the fact that maybe they're trying to make the standalone TBS TNT apps relevant. Because I think that's part of why you don't see every single show from Adult Swim on HBO Max. Like, you can't watch Fat Guy Stuck in Internet. You can't watch uh, Soul of the Moment. You have to literally go to Adult Swim and their app and find it there. So I wonder yeah. I wonder if that's the rationale. Oh, you can't watch it through us. You have to watch uh these shows through the app. I I mean that again, that's the only rationale I could come up with if any I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on that. I don't know. I mean others other services take shit down all the time too. That like belongs to them, like Netflix. Yeah, but that to that point that's so it's, that's it's weird. Yeah, that, I don't know. that's more of a rights thing though. Like Warner Discovery owns these properties. They don't they don't uh loan them out to other companies like Bob's Burgers for instance on or 
the Fox stuff that we thought was going to be long dead on Adult Swim, they're still loaning them out to Swim, according to what I've heard, up until the end of this year. But that's yeah. but that's a different thing, or where some of the stuff that's still on Hulu can't is stuck on Hulu until the until the contract with Hulu ends. Kind of like your pretty face is going to hell just ended, and now it's on HBO Max. Mm. Where that that's a little bit different than okay, well we have this show, we own this show. Now for some reason it's not going to be on our streaming app. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm nuts. <laughs> Who knows? Either either we'll never know the reason, or it'll be obvious. Yeah. Or someone will point out, oh, they they did it because of you know X, Y, and Z. Yeah. No. Eric Andre on. Uh, HBO he is. Max? He's on HBO. It's on Max, yeah. Okay, yeah, because it seems like there are. I'm looking at Hulu now as we're speaking, and I notice there are some exceptions to that rule. So it's Eric. Hulu has where's Hulu? They got Rick and they always had Rick and Morty from the get go. Then they still Hulu still has Venture, still has Eric Andre, still has Black Jesus, still has Your Pretty Face, and then they have Mama Name Name Me Sheriff, Dream Corps, and Mister Pickles, and then something called Fire Force. That's an anime. Yeah, I don't know why that's part of the. Uh, do they do they produce that? Do you know? No. That's weird. No, definitely not. I think they just, they had a license for Toonami. Oh. So maybe that's why Hulu includes it. But otherwise, Probably? out of those other five, yeah, Mr. Pickle slash Mama Name Me Sheriff are the only ones that are not on Max. And then everything else kind of fell off, because I remember Children's Hospital and NTSF were on Hulu for a while, and then they fell off. I want to say there was one other one that was a big name that didn't make it to HBO Max yet. I don't know. To your point, Jason, it's it's a very weird thing, the streaming stuff. Yeah. I, I do wish, ideally, I wish everything that I liked was on HBO Max, but... Again, if it if it's a, a thing where they want to continue making their the standalone apps relevant, then okay, fine. If I want to watch, you know, fat guy stuck in internet at some time, a point or saw the moment, I guess I have to go to Adult Swim's app versus HBO Max. I mean, I was initially hoping when Max got announced and they said that there was there was going to be Adult Swim content that it was just sort of going to be the the big Adult Swim archive with everything. Yeah. That's what I thought too. So it's it's a little it's it's a little annoying that it's not all there, but yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's it's very da- it's later. very it's very daunting just because for the fact that they were advertising Squidbillies and it took Squidbillies like what five or six months for them to release it. It was like HBO, yeah. I think the the app came out in like the summertime and they didn't have Squidbillies by like January first. It's like and you guys don't have it anywhere else, so you can't make the argument, oh, we just didn't, you know, whatever whatever rationale, we, we have no idea, basically. I don't know. Although, on the flip side, I do appreciate that we don't have to wait six months to a year for new seasons to show up now. Now the new stuff is instantly going on to max the next day. Yeah, that is nice. I mean, I also, I saw, like, like, to that point, I seen, like, I saw, like, a commercial for, uh, Primal, I think, is air has started airing this week, or is airing this coming week, mm-hmm. uh, season two, and like part of the ad was airs Thursday on HBO mm-hmm. Max Friday. Yeah, I, I noticed that with oh. uh, Bird Girl and with Tuca and Birdie coming up. Yeah, they're, so they just they're all saying this. They're pushing thing. it. I think they're and, yeah. I think they adopted the uh, FX. Uh, model because FX yeah. has been like that for a while, where it's like, okay, you you watch this now, or you watch this now on FX, or you can watch it in another day or two on Hulu. Yeah, which I appreciate. I like yeah. that. I like you know. Yeah, like we like to go to bed at like nine, <laughs> eight thirty in the winter. Damn. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I know John's laughing because he never sleeps and he wonders why he's tired all the time. No, mm-hmm. I I don't. I'm always tired. That's why I don't go to sleep. Listen, I go to bed at like two in the morning every day. Yeah, me too. You so if not, if not three. But my problem is I have to be up uh, Monday through Friday at like nine a.m. So. Oh, I I wake up at fucking. I gotta be up. I gotta I gotta work at eight. Oh, but you gotta make the it, bread with the fucking seeds in it. 
Yeah, I know. And I the, gotta, well, I don't make the bread. I just make the sandwiches on oh, the bread. Oh, you put the gabagool in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, like, I, I wake up at like I wake up at like seven, and I go to bed at like two. You're like time to make that gabagool. But my point is, I really like being able to watch Bird Girl the next day or two days later, and like with FX, I like watching what we do in the shadows, and it's mm-hmm. always sunny. Mm-hmm. Exactly, you know? and that's that's like the new model for streaming is that. I think a lot of these companies have become aware that people aren't going to watch their content for another, you know, either the next day or sometime. Like, uh, a lot of times, if we have stuff we're, we're recording on Sunday nights, my wife and I will watch, we'll end up watching it Monday or later. Mm-hmm. Like, like, we like Bob's Burgers and we like John Oliver, but if they're airing them at 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock on a Sunday night and we have to be awake the next morning... We're not watching them until at the earliest uh, Monday night on, mm-hmm. on DVR. And a lot of people don't do the, the DVR stuff anymore. They just go, you know, if they're not watched, like Jason is not a TV guy f- completely anymore. Yeah. So, like I, I have I have television access. Like we have my my, my, my household has uh, YouTube TV, mm-hmm. which is like their, you know, their live television streaming thing or whatever yeah, yeah and i could live. Re- i could dvr shit but at the same time i have max I'll just wait for it to go on there exactly find it somewhere else exactly and like i was saying earlier i wasn't in gonna go into smiling friends originally when it first aired and then i said you know what let me you know the whole season's on max let me go binge it there and that's what i did and even before uh you know, Max, it was a lot more complicated just because, like, watching the last season of Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell, I had to watch, you know, uh, I think Swim had X amount of episodes. And then, oh, I remember what happened. I watched, like, the last season that was on Hulu. And then I think that last season that aired, I couldn't get it until it wasn't available right away on hulu so i had to watch it in bits and pieces on different mediums i had to go to i think one episode i watched on apple one episode i watched on voodoo Mm -hmm. i i forget like i bought i bought ended up buying a couple and then maybe like torrenting a couple (laughs) no i'm sorry that's what it was it was it was when it was on tv i had dvr a couple episodes and i bought like the two or three that i was missing so at least now i don't i don't have to do that or go oh i have to watch it with commercials on demand so i I do appreciate this new model of you know you can watch it you can watch it now or we'll have it available to you later in in its entire season like right now, yeah. I haven't watched any episodes of Bird Girl season two, but now there's four of them on, on Max. No, oh, I never watched anything beyond like the first two episodes of that show. Well, I'm sure we'll be discussing that in a minute. Um, yeah, just let's just blow through the rest of. I mean, not a whole lot. I mean, Gennady Tartakovsky. Uh, signed a, a new contract with Warner Brothers Animation, so he's going to be continuing developing stuff. Uh, yes. Probably Primal and whatever else. I was I was jo- mostly joking, but I said maybe he'll finally develop Korgoth. I I hope not. Why not? <laughs> a, long, a long time ago I decided, out of pure spite, that I hope that that show never gets made. Because of how people used to act on the old Adult Swim boards when it came to that show. Ugh. <sighs> Don't even get me started with that. People wouldn't shut the fuck up about Korgoth. And I remember back during those days, I just decided, you know what? I hope they never make this television show. <laughs> out of spite. Just, out of spite, just out for, of this, spite. for this online message board cesspool. Yeah. I mean, I never... Re- I always I always thought that pilot was fucking overrated to begin with. But I like, I don't know. I liked it. <laughs> I, it was okay. He's done so much better stuff than that. Mm. Like so much better like 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 even i haven't watched a ton of primal but primal is fantastic mm. and uh like all the stuff he has coming up too sounds amazing both in both within warner and outside of warner is he still developing because, like, that movie uh, the popeye movie Do so that's know? back that's back on oh good because that 
that that was canceled, and I think out of the cancellation came Hotel Transylvania. Mm. Which the first Hotel Hotel Transylvania is actually a pretty fun movie. I watched the first one, and it's very him. It's got a lot of his mannerisms that mm. he always had in his cartoons. The noodle arms, the face, the facial expressions, everything—it's actually pretty fun. They're they're very cute. Um, if you haven't seen it. even the even the third one, yes, I, I don't know. Yeah, if I have I, to watch the other two. I don't know if I want to yeah. watch the fourth one because it just it just sounds like yeah. it, it sounds it's, like they're it's... they're milking it at this point, and they Definitely. they didn't even have Adam Sandler or Kevin James in the movie. Yeah, and not worth it. Yeah. But they they Popeye is now apparently back on. It's not. It's. I don't think it's at the studio it was initially going to be at. It's somewhere else. I forget exactly where, but I did hear that that's back on. Um, he's also working on two movies with, I think Sony. And, I think both of them are. R-rated animated films. Ooh. Which I'm very excited about. One of them. Uh, I forget what it's something about a something with like a samurai or a ninja or something like that that they, he like he like leaked some images from and they look fantastic. Mm. And then uh, he's doing one that's a comedy about a dog that finds out that it's getting um, getting neutered oh, God. or something. And uh, like I don't remember something 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 along those lines. But uh, those are both supposed to be animated films for adults. Which we don't see a whole hell of a lot of, really, mm. in film. Um, and then part of the part of the Warner deal is he has a series coming up called Unicorn Warriors Eternal, huh. which uh, is apparently the they, they showed some stuff off at Annecy, I think I, I read. Based off of, um, oh God, what's the game? Uh, what? I don't know. On Adult Swim? No, it's definitely not related to that. Oh. Oh, um, you mean Unicorn Attack? Robot Unicorn you, Attack? Robot Unicorn Attack, oh, yeah. I don't, think yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's that, Trish. I really don't think it's No, that. it's un- it's unrelated. Yeah. It's It looks nothing like it, too. It's much darker. Uh, It's got, like, this, like, mixture of, like, the the art style looks like this mixture of like uh, old like Tezuka anime like uh, Gigantor and uh, Astro Boy uh, mixed with like Betty Betty Boop type shit. Mm, I see the I see the poster. I like the character designs. They're interesting. They showed some of it off apparently at Annecy, and people I, I read some people raving about what they showed. So I'm excited to see what happens with that. Yeah, I'm reading about it now. It does look interesting. I've I've never. It's unfortunate. I I haven't watched a lot of his stuff. Like, full disclosure, I've never watched Samurai Jack. And I. I mean, I, I've I haven't seen the whole series myself. I mean, the most the most of the most that I've watched with his stuff is was Dexter's Lab. Oh, all that. yes, yes, a million times. Dexter's but, Lab um, is legendary. I've seen a handful of Samurai Jack, and like. That I've seen. I, I remember wa- trying to watch through all of uh, Symbionic Titan when it was airing too. I forgot he did that. And like he he is an incredible storyteller, especially with visuals. And that's why I am very excited for them to do more with more with him and like let him actually have creative freedom because when he does and he does stuff that he usually does like. Like some of the stuff that he did in the last season of Samurai Jack, it it's always amazing. Hmm. Like I would I would recommend trying to check out the uh, the snow fight. There's like there's a there's a fight in in a snowy forest from the last season of Samurai Jack that just looks absolutely stunning. Hmm. I've never seen anything like it. Interesting. Do you think it was inspired by that Kill Bill scene? Um, I don't know. I think it was it was very it was very unique because it was it was like it was it was pure white and they're running in a in a snowy forest that's pure white. There's no scenery on the screen whatsoever, and when they go behind trees, there's just a white line in front of them. And I thought that was super unique and creative, oh, yeah. and I'd never seen anything like that before. Hmm. Yeah. And so it's very cool, 
definitely worth checking out. He's amazing, and I'm excited for what he's going to work on mm. with Warner. Yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, speaking of anime, they're they're also developing the Rick and Morty anime and something called Ninja Kenju. I don't know if you know. Yeah, I heard about that. I do not care about the Rick and Morty anime. I will say that. I think I tried. I have one on DVR, and I tried watching the other one. I don't know. Honestly, it just, it, it just seems like yet another Rick and Morty cash cow. It is. It, yeah. they're gonna, it's going to be slapped on some merch, and you're going to find it at your local Hot Topic and, and, and Box Lunch and, and Newberry yeah. Comics in a month or two. Mm-hmm. I thought they were both pretty cool, but I think making a series out of it is a little much, even if it is only ten episodes. Mm-hmm. It's unnecessary. It's just more... It's just more. It, li- li- it literally is just more. Let's make more Rick and Morty, Morty merch, but we want to make it anime this time. Yeah, it's hmm. to me. It's just like, you know, you have so many creative people in the world, and I know Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon are two of the most. But give somebody else a chance. Like, there's so much good content out there that you're denying because you're like, oh, let's just keep Rick and Morty playing because, hmm. like. Rick and Morty so famous. I even ha- heard it mentioned on an episode of Blackish once. And I was like, mm-hmm. "It's too young to be watching Rick and Morty." Yeah, I mean, there are people, there are people I work with who have never seen like fuck all from Adult Swim, but they they like Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. I forget. Yeah, where, a- I forget where I was. The 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 family had a, a a little kid that looked like they couldn't have been more than six or seven. Oh, I think it was a Best Buy, and they had a kid with them that looked like they couldn't have been more than eight or nine, and they're wearing a Rick and Morty tie dye shirt. And I'm like, what the fuck yeah. is this? I'm not surprised. Yeah, that's disturbing. It's I like, would not want my nine year old watching an episode about a. A giant incest baby, and that's made- where my brain went to. It's like that's the that's the the pinnacle of, of the uh, absurdity of Rick and Morty is the adult humor like that. And you're going to show yeah. it to an eight or nine year old kid? Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah, exactly. I don't know. So, other news. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, other other news. I mean, not too much else going on. San Diego Comic Con's wrapping up. I mean, we alluded to that before. They're going to have four panels. Uh, Smiling Friends one, which I guess they're going to gear up for season two. Tuca and Birdie, which is the new season's premiering. Uh, I think what this weekend or next weekend? Yeah, sometime tonight. soon. Night. Uh, I'll, oh, ca- really? I'll catch it on HBO Max. <laughs> Same, yeah. Actually, we we're, oh. we actually started watching Tuca and Birdie, and and I think we enjoy it to a degree, but we didn't finish watching the last season. Is is season one still only on Netflix? That is a good question. And I had Max up, and I don't think I have Max anymore because I canceled my Netflix subscription. But I'm I've sure. also never watched Tuca and Birdie, and I'd like to. It is still on. Yeah, season one is still on Netflix. Nope. But you don't have to watch season one necessarily to really get into season two. I'm sure. Like I just I'd like to. We only watched like one episode or two episodes of season one, but then when adults started playing it, I started watching it regularly and I really like it. it. And what I was gonna start to say, and I think Trish you'll you'll get this too and appreciate this, is that it's Produced by, you know, it's produced by Swim. It's directed by a woman, starring women, and it's general everyday problems that they try and, you know, in between all of the absurdity of, okay, there's a whole town dedicated to plant people, and the plant people are, you know, I, I forget the whole episode. There was like a whole thing where she tried to move in, so, uh, Birdie tried to move somewhere into this apartment complex and the apartment complex was being taken over by plants by the moss yes the moss bought the complex like it, it's it, it seemed very uh, like even the first episode i can recall because my memory's going now 
is the one where Birdie's trying to find a new therapist. And she keeps raving about this one she sees on TV and she's going through them. And I'm just like, yeah, that's that's kind of the struggle that that every it's it's relatable. I guess is what I'm saying is, you know, there, there's mental health stuff, there's relationship yeah. stuff. And at the same time, it's still really entertaining. Yeah, because it's it's got, you know, it's got a fantastic voice cast with uh, Tiffany Haddish, Shally Wong, Stephen Yoon. Um, who else? Oh, the boss is uh, Richard E. Grant. I forget who else is in it. There have been some good uh, cameos, if I recall. But it's got a good cast and it's got a good tone to it. And it's one of those shows where it fits on Adult Swim. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad it's it got us, uh, well, a third season now. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I'm glad they picked it up. Yeah, that it got it got a second life, like yeah. a second chance at life on yeah. the Swim. After yeah. Netflix got rid of it, and absolutely that it, it's probably one of the only shows that I could think of where a Netflix show gets canceled and then picked up by a network. Mm-hmm. Usually, it's the opposite. Like, how many shows has uh, how many pilots has Swim passed on that have become shows? I could think of two. Yeah. I could think of two automatically. There was uh, Super Mansion that Crackle picked up, and then the one that Paul Shear did uh, for Fox, the the Sexy Teens. That was supposed to be a spoof of of one of the other shows. Mm-hmm. I forget the full name. Dirt, dirt, uh, dirty, filthy, sexy teens. I think it was oh, it yeah, was spo- it was spoofed on NTSF. I think, and then they ended up developing it into a pilot. The pilot aired on Swim. Swim passed on it, and then they ended up selling it to Fox. Well, Paul Shear, not Swim, ended up selling it to Fox. Yeah, I mean nowadays well, there's a handful of those those situations where they just sort of the pilots get passed on, and then Max does it. Mm-hmm. And that's and that would that's be, a thing that would be cool too. Like I would like to see the like. Uh, Korgoth? No, <laughs> I'll I'll pass I'll pass on Korgoth. I'll say like Cheyenne Cinnamon or well, there, uh, there is one coming. Oh, there is. Yes, uh, there's one. I sent it like a month ago. Hold on. Uh, yeah, th- there's one that that Max picked up that was actually a swim pilot apparently called Scavengers Rain. Huh. Um, Titmouse is animating it. Uh, there's a trailer, it, which is worth looking up. It, it looks incredible. It's a, it's it seem it's definitely not a it's not a comedy. It seems like a very dramatic show, and it looks in, it looks amazing. It looks oh, yeah. very trippy. It looks beautiful. Oh yeah, I found an article from Deadline. Scavengers reign about the surviving crew of a damaged deep space space freighter who are stranded on a beautiful yet unforgiving planet. Huh. Mm-hmm. The trailer is gorgeous. It looks like it's a, looks like a beautiful show. And, and, t- and it was and I, I, it was the fact that Titmouse is making it. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Chris must be raking in the dough. I tell you, they must be doing well these days with the shit. What that was been what was the other show getting. that they just announced they were doing? The big there was a big show that's coming back that they said Titmouse was was oh. it was it Beavis and Butthead? I think they did. I think they did work on the movie. No, Actually, no. The, what was the, the one, one? The one. No, the Ghostbusters movie. Oh, okay, or the, yeah. Or the TV show. Although, wait, did they? I could have sworn I read that they actually worked on Beavis and Butter. I think that I think you're right, but the big one was Ghostbusters. I forget if it's a movie mm-hmm. or either it's an animated movie or it's an animated TV show that they're coming out with. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah they did. They, it's a movie, and they yeah, and I was right. They did do the new Beavis and Butthead uh, movie also. Yeah. Good, good on that's, Chris. That's huge. I, you know, I we I we etc. Love everything that Chris does, especially when we had him on. We were I think we were geeking out mm-hmm. enough that he was probably like, yeah, okay, whatever. But mm, huge uh, fan of them. Yeah, him he and he, and, he deserves it. Yeah, 
And their and their company is apparently a good place to work because they're one of the few animation studios that unionized. Yeah, good on them. So they're they're doing pretty damn good. <laughs> Props to them. Huge respect to to Mouse and everyone there. Yeah. Um. So STCC, we talked about two. Co- oh, and Primal, and then what I said earlier. They're doing the Vindicators uh, digital series. So I'm sure they'll probably talk about who, what, where, when, and why on that. Which you know, we'll see what happens there. That could be that could be interesting. But again, you know, to our previous point, it's another Rick and Morty cash cow. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know, if if it's something that hasn't been airing for a long time, like Aqua Teen, then it's something that you look forward to versus something extra. But I guess remains to be seen. Yeah. Hmm. The one, the one thing that I'm looking forward to, uh, and I know they're going to have a panel at Comic-Con too, is uh, Koala Man, but that's for Hulu. And that's, Koala uh, Man. that's the new one by Michael Cusack produced by Justin Roiland. Oh, it sounds like it was it was another one of his old shorts that he's developing, like YOLO and Oh, I'm pretty sure it actually is. It looks familiar. Yeah. I saw That's good. I saw a little clip o- online that looked like they added they had some of the characters from some of the other shows. I don't know if it was a clip of from Hulu or their de- or one that they're developing. Mm-hmm. But it's Michael oh, it's always... it's Michael Cusack and it's Justin Roiland and it's on Hulu. Yeah, so. I'm always into I'm always into whatever uh, Michael Cusack's doing. Oh yeah, like I said before, I I haven't I don't think I've seen anything of his so far that I haven't fully enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, honestly fucking um, Bush World Adventures. That was the, that's my that favorite piece start. of Rick and Morty material. Me too. We quote that like at least once or twice a week still. Get in and the like, fucking car, Morty! We it's were so holding a scene, because today I I was wearing shorts, and we went out for brunch, and I got stuck on the booth. You know how, like, your legs will... Your your skin will get, like, stuck on the booth's, like... Oh, yeah. Plastic, whatever. Oh, I'm stuck, so, Reek. I'm like, I'm stuck. I can't. I'm stuck. Bang. Oh, my God, you killed him. No! <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's good uh yeah other other than newsworthy i mean there's a couple of plugs i should get to uh that are worthy mc chris is gonna have a, a tour this summer apparently he's gonna be out in la at the last room at the lodge room on august 13th we'll have a, a link in the show notes for that one but he's doing a tour all over the country he's, he it's touted as the last tour but I don't yep. know if that's like Jason. Do you know anything about MC Chris nope. these days? Okay. No, I, I haven't. I, followed, I, 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 fi- haven't I, I figured. I, I figured I'd ask you. You might be the most knowledgeable. I don't think Trish knows. Like, no, nah, I haven't is, followed. Is him this ages. is this something where he's legitimately stopping touring, or is he just calling it the last tour? I don't know. I, I like unfollowed him on everything, so I haven't like. Oh. Well, been paying attention to him. Okay, then. I haven't listened to his music in a long time either. Gotcha. So it's like, so hey. it's it's the lodge room at this is my, my show present MC Chris the last tour the last show with Jonah Ray's you can call me Al August thirteenth twenty twenty two seven thirty p.m. So, I got that I got that uh, from because uh, this is my show as a follower of, of ours. Props to him. And and good on what he does for MC Chris and, and other promotions. Appreciated. So mm-hmm. we'll have a link in the show notes uh, for that. Also, the other thing of note, and should probably be up by the time this is posted, because I don't think I'm going to get this done in the next day <laughs> to be posted up online, but uh, our friend Andy Sipes. Hey, Trish, you remember him, right? Shut the fuck up, John. <laughs> Andy Sipes, who we've spoken to on this show before, he did uh, 
Code Monkeys. He's done. St- he did Sipe stories and uh, songs for helping for AdultSwim.com. He did a. He's done a lot of work for Swim. Saw the Mole Men, uh, Archer for FX. God, I can't. He he's done a, a lot of work for a lot of shows. Minority Team. The the cool thing about Sipes is he's done like every single thing you can imagine for these different shows. Like he's done voiceovers, he's done animation, he's done editing, he's done writing. I mean, he's just like a renaissance man of adult cartoons. Absolutely, I agree. And Code Monkeys was a big to do back in back in my day. Uh, yeah, G four was went back when G four was still a big thing, and now they're trying to come back. But mm-hmm. I don't know. That doesn't sound like it's going to be the same thing. But um, yeah. my brother was obsessed with Code Monkeys, and mm-hmm. he was obsessed with the the guy that did the theme song for it, Jonathan Colton. Jonathan Colton, yes, thank you. Yeah. Second time today you've corrected me on that, and yes. I appreciate it because I forgot. Okay, fair enough. So yeah. Andy Sipes and his writing partner, who you might remember as the voice of Dave from Dave and Jerry on Code Monkeys, Matt Mariska, they're developing and crowdfunding a new show called Burning Earth, which is sounds like it's in the similar uh, animation style as Code Monkeys with the same humor, because obviously there's a, a Jagunda collab, uh, conglom that owns Code Monkeys and they can't get the rights to it. So they're doing something brand new. Which looks and sounds awesome, and we're on board. Hey, maybe we can even get an interview with them or something down the road. But we'll have the Kickstarter in the show notes. Sounds fun. Again, maybe we could pick their brains on stuff, talk to them about life, love, and more Soul Plane. Because, you know, we talked to Andy about being the PA on Soul Plane. You remember that, right, Trish? Fuck you. Let's go on. (laughs) right along yeah so that's that's all the news that's fit to print what are we geeking out about as far as uh shows that we've been watching i mean i know we've we've... did you delete them from no okay yeah i did i i have the doc and i'm like where the fuck did okay so we have smiling friends can we talk about smiling friends no because we've been talking about smiling friends this whole time and i said we'll be talking about more smiling friends because it is a great it is a great show it's Let's fantastic. About smiling friends, because there were like there's so many great episodes. Like I, I think my favorite Hello. is when they go on the quest just because they have that hobbit there from the movie The Hobbit. Hello. From the eighties and he's really creepily drawn. Oh, uh, was that the Halloween special? Mm, no, that's um No, the Halloween special I think is the is the was the uh the one where Pim gets lost in the woods. Oh no, I remember. Yeah, Pim gets lost in the woods. I remember the one because they go for the for the queen. They try and get the princess or the queen, whatever she is. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, yes. it's the forest one. That's the uh, yeah, that's the forest one. That's not the Halloween. One. Yes, the no, Halloween it, one. Is it took me a minute because I I, I, yeah. I binged, like I said before, I binged most of the series, and there were only a couple that really like stood out to me. Like obviously, Mr. Frog is my favorite. <laughs> And, and I see. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> no, so I, I, I was gonna say is, the I watched the entire series back to back to back, two days in a row. Like it came out, I watched the whole series in one go, and then a bunch of people in a Discord server I hang out in decided to watch it, and so I watched it all again. And I think I've rewatched this entire season. It had to be. It has to be like five times by now. Oh God! It's it's. I like. I'll show. I've been showing it to people. I've been just rewatching episodes because I'm bored. Like it, it's, it's, it's the most fun I've been having with an Adult Swim show in a long, long time. Agreed. Mm-hmm. There, there's so many episodes that I remember, but the the two that that I guess meshed together for me were the Enchanted Forest and the Halloween special. The Halloween special I love because I love the ending of that episode. I forget. It. I love the the forest demon shows up mm-hmm. and chases Pim out of the woods and then into the back into the Smiling Friends building. 
mm-hmm. where they're having a Halloween party and a bunch of them accuse the forest demon of wearing blackface. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. He's like charred wood. So they just destroy him, kill him, and light him on fire. <laughs> Oh, man. And I think, like, the boss is, like, eating him or something like that. The, bo- the boss is insane. <laughs> the boss is great. I love him. I love him in, um... What the fuck? What episode? Bleep. The Frowning Friends one? Yes. 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 Where he, like, goes... Po- he goes totally crazy and is about to shoot people and... He, like, brings the rifle over to the Frowning Friends building. Mm. It's too much. No, I think besides, I mean, obviously, I think my favorite has to be Mr. Frog. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? Hello. What have you been Sorry. doing all this time? Hello, watching Jimmy Fallon clips on YouTube. Hello. Uh, I think that one is my favorite. And then who violently murdered Simon as Salty for the, for the sheer fact that they got uh, what's his face from uh, Windy City Heat <laughs> as the as the character. <laughs> I love that episode. Uh, what the fuck is his name now? He's on. He's on Twitch. They they got him. Oh, Perry Caravello. They got him on, on mm-hmm. Twitch doing yes. like stupid shit too. Uh, but, favorite episodes are probably the Halloween one and um, fuck maybe Frowning Friends. No, the Shrimp Shrimp's Odyssey. Shrimp. With the I, guy, love, I, I love I love that Shrimp is voiced by the guy who voiced uh, Salad Fingers. Is yeah. It yep. Oh my god. I love salad fingers. Mm. So dark. Yep. Adam does not like salad fingers. It, it's a very acquired taste. It is. And then the Christmas episode is great, if only for Gilbert Gottfried as God. Oh yeah. yeah. I like I like Satan uh, sitting there. At his like dual monitors movie. with disc with Discord on playing Rust. <laughs> oh, I thought he was playing the mouse game. No, he was playing an actual game. <laughs> like, oh, which is Adam pointed that out to me. Which I kind of love. I kind of love that God that that Satan was actually sitting there playing an actual video game that exists God. instead of some like bullshit that they, you know, rendered and made into a game. Oh Lord! No, oh, it's got some great episodes. I I love that show, and I'm glad it's coming back for a season two. Did Did Same. you guys see um, Reddit uh, place? What? Yeah, that was a that was a fucking mess. I I did my best to constantly um, keep up with the smiling friends picture. I I worked on um. Oh, God, what's the yellow guy's name? Pim. Pim? Yeah, I mostly worked on Pim, keeping his eyes small. I I had no participation in place, but I did watch place happen. Oh, see, I, I neither, yeah, I, neither, I, neither I neither had I neither had participation nor did I watch it. It was like from from the perspective where I was watching place happen. Um. Man, that turned into a war mm-hmm. be- between like several groups, and like 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 com- this is completely unrelated to fucking smiling friends. But <laughs> like I watched, I watched like a big Twitch streamer attack several smaller streamers and like several entire communities just because he wanted, because he wanted to. And then I saw like like I'm I'm watching that happen, and then people making truces and like treaties with the guy. Like it's supposed to be some silly like big lighthearted pixel art project, and then it turned into like an actual war. Mm-hmm. Place is really weird. Mm. It was intense. I mean, it's Reddit, so yeah. Uh. I read Reddit every day, but not like like everyone else I know reads it constantly. But I just read what I get in the email, and Adam's like, seriously, is that all you do? And I'm like, yeah. I haven't opened Reddit in months. Except for, like, I'll check stuff for, like, if I'm looking for troubleshooting with some stuff. That's about it. Or, like, recommendations. 
I read the Reddit Maryland page a lot because I fucking love Maryland. I used to look at the New York City one. A lot. Not as cool as Maryland. Yeah. No, probably not. We're not as weird. I guess I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Maryland. Lately, know. there's a, a Maryland guy. He's dressed up in the American flag and has a crab shield, and his his sword is a crab mallet. Oh. I mean, that's kind of dope. Actually, yeah, it's but. really dope. We don't got anything cool like that. Hmm. Yeah. Any anyway, uh, Trish, you wanted to tell us about Bird Girl season two. Yes, it is really, really good. Um, Compared to the first season. You know, I think the first season is really amazing, but I think mm-hmm. what you really have to do is tell yourself, this is not Harvey Birdman. This is not Harvey Birdman attorney at law. Like, mm-hmm. you have to get away from that. And you have to say, okay, this is... This is Judy, Ken Seven, and this is her show, and a hilarity will ensue after after you get comfortable enough with like okay this isn't Harvey Birdman all right let's separate this okay it it is funny it is a quality show the only complaint that I have is her fucking upper lip is black and it just looks really weird it looks like her face is rotting off. And I hate that they did that, but now they're on a season two, so they can't fix it in in subsequent seasons. But it's it's really funny. I don't know. Even with even taking out the the Harvey Birdman thing, like I watched a couple, like an episode or two with my wife, and, and I don't think she's seen. If she's seen Harvey Birdman, she hasn't seen a lot of it or remembers it. And we were just. I, I don't know. We couldn't. And I'm hoping that maybe season two will be better. But I, I didn't I don't... like Rick and Morty at first. Uh, I think that was a thing where you had to... That was one of those usual things where you had to go a few episodes in until anything was remotely funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one thing I did find funny about Birdman was... Uh, Bird Girl was the part with the cat going around and helping other people. Yeah, that was really funny. And they had the... I think I mentioned this when we talked about season one. They had the one gag where it was, like, Dairy Queen slash, like, Jiffy Lube or something. And it it called back to, like, those old goofs that they had in Harvey Birdman, where it was, like, LSD, breast milk, LSD-flavored breast milk. (laughs) Or, like, just something in the background that was just there, and you're like, oh, this is funny. I don't know. I think Bird Girl's funny. I think everybody should give it a chance. Watch a few episodes. I'll give season two a chance. I was just curious to know if it if it was any better than the first season because we didn't really care for it. I don't think I watched more than the first three episodes, personally. Mm. I was not I was not impressed with it. But who knows? Uh, maybe I'll give the second season a try to at some point. So, Pibby, uh, I think next we should talk about Aquadonk. Why are you glossing over Pibby? It was on, uh, it was the April Fool's joke. Wait, what the fuck is Pibby? You, you don't know what Pibby is? Oh, it was, uh, that little rabbit that... Bon Bon Bon. Yeah, I could not stay up to watch that. Well, no, nor could I, but I watched people have the clips online. Or you could watch the original short online. <clears throat> I I had no idea what that was at first. I never saw the original short originally. Like I think I think I heard people talk about it, but I never actually saw it until the Vapor Fools thing happened. Hmm. In it's fact, a cool concept. In fact, I think it was... I think they had the original short on HBO Max after the April Fool's joke aired. Maybe. It's a cool concept if they ever do it. 
the the April Fool's joke did nothing for me. Yeah, but, it was it was just in there. Yeah. It was kind of like the the that one of those first years where they put in the farts and the and the beards. Mm-hmm. It's been a while since we've had like a really interesting April Fool's stunt. Mm. You're gonna feel oh, like I, didn't I think that was the last big one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, All right. So let's talk about Aqua Donk. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? It was good. It was fucking amazing. Welcome back, Aqua Teen. Welcome back, Aqua Teen. I mean, even if it was short five minute clips, it's better than nothing. It brought yep. Hand Banana back, which I think a lot of people were happy about. Not even once, but twice. twice. And then and then back to mm-hmm. MC Chris, we got to see MCP Pants back as a spider. Oh, I loved that one. That was the best, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I forget that whole I, that whole I, line that where he's today. where he's like, "Oh, uh <laughs> They don't care about you, your uh, your kids. I fr- I fr- I'm f- I'm blanking on the whole. I had the whole thing memorized because I watched it so many times. Yeah, he's like telling the old guy that like his kids don't care about him, and then like the old guy dies or something, and he's like the kids don't really care about him at all. And I don't know. I I thought it was hilarious. Let's see what were the what were the episodes. I'm looking them up now. So there was Return of Ham Banana. There was the Brood Rap, which was absurd. Oh, that one was good. Mm. Where was the Brood Witch, but it was a rap? Uh, MCP Pants University. No what? No sun dried tomatoes this time. Mm-hmm. A lesson has been learned. <laughs> and Moonmaster 9 Beware of the Gorgatron, which was basically our buddy Nick Gibbons doing a, a Twitch. Uh, walkthrough of a game. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot the big. I forget the big one. For, oh yeah, I have a tiny penis. <laughs> uh, what was the other? One? Oh, frat aliens hell week. That was the one with the with uh, the frat aliens and the other one voiced by the dude who do, did uh, the Trump impressions, who's on SNL now. I forget his name now. James James something something. Did the voice of the other alien. Uh, but there was that. There was Markula the Slumlord with the Plutonians. Merlo, Merlo's Revenge on the Unbelievable Ron. Oh, and my other favorite, the dumbest doll of all time, Hand Banana's Demise. Oh, wait. No, that's the... Uh, fucking wiki. Fuck you. The dumbest, doll, <laughs> the dumbest doll of all time and Hand Banana's Demise was the last one. But they have it all... Think- they have them both on one line. <laughs> I think those last two are the only ones I missed. Because I think I watched the majority of the rest and I haven't gotten around to watching the last two. Hand Banana's Demise was good weird. Though. And outside of the, the, the usual. Dumbest Doll of all time you have to watch because it's basically a continuation of Dumber Dolls. Mm-hmm. And they no, basically, they play off the Highlander uh, shtick. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're good. They're, they're not my favorite Aqua Teen stuff in the world, but they're good. good no, episodes. They, they hold up on their own, and, and it's kind of funny, because I, I was kind of... I kind of left thinking, like, are these supposed to be, like, continuations of when they... the original episodes? Because there's never any... Con, you know, Aqua Teen has never had any continuity outside of, like, little background stuff. But yeah. they've always felt like they were maybe their own multiverse... Like, for instance, well, I guess Brood now, I guess technically it can't because Shake, I think, was Shake alive for the Brood Rap episode? Yeah, because of the change. Okay, never mind. Um, number one, didn't they have Rabot in in the Aquadocs? In the miniseries? I don't remember. And number two... The biggest piece of continuity I've ever seen from that show is when they go to the mall, and it always has the giant rabbit outline. You know what? This wiki is missing mm-hmm. an episode too because there was an episode with uh, what's uh, with uh, cybernetic ghost. Mm-hmm. Where wow. he had to take all of his weapons out. Oh yeah, 
the mall security one. Yeah, and I'm like, mm-hmm. why is he invisible? I'm like, oh yeah, he's a cybernetic ghost. Like mm. it, it, it took it took me a minute for that one. Yeah. And then I guess we should probably talk about the movie too. Well, there's not really much to talk about the the sequel, the movie part two, whatever you want to call it. Well, cool. just the fact that supposedly Dave said it's it's set to come out in November, and a couple other people I think have said that. I'm skeptical because, I, and I mean, maybe they'll announce it in a few weeks at the festival, but until I see something official on that, I mean, even if you see something official, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come out when they says they, it's going to come out, because yeah. remember how many times they delayed the original movie. In fact, there, there's the one part of the movie where when, at the beginning, when they have the, the tour the Girl Quest tour and and the shirt says 2007, but then Frylock says 2005. Hmm. So I mean, we'll say it's November, but we we here are not guaranteeing that it will be November. So I mean, take that take that one with a grain of salt. It, it's going to be awesome when it finally comes out, and yeah. maybe we can talk to some of the guys. I'm not even going to bother with. Uh, asking uh out the out the proper through the proper outlet i'm just gonna go straight to dave and say hey can we talk to you guys because i think my you know what, we could talk to him about many many things it doesn't have to be in the movie it could be like so dave how are you how's your wife and your kids heard you're making a sequel that's pretty good also can we please talk about kool-aid for a while why kool-aid I don't know. I just like Kool Aid. Who doesn't? Like Adam's Kool-Aid? making a lot of Kool Aid. I like Mio. I think I've become a Mio guy these days. See, I can't do. I can't do like fake sugar. It makes me sick to my stomach. What so. do you think? Oh, you you mix the powdered Kool Aid with the sugar? No, you just mix powdered Kool Aid in a big pitcher of water, and then like, oh, you, pour yourself. Oh, a you glass get so you get so you get the Kool Aid powder with the sweetener in it. Yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Because anytime I've seen Kool Aid within the powder form, it's the one that um, has the that has nothing in it that you have to add your own sweetener. Oh, one second. Do you add sugar to the Kool Aid? Yeah, you have to. Oh, I thought it came without. An, I thought it came with the sugar in it. Hmm. Oh, well, go back to your game. You add a cup. You can't. Kool Aid doesn't automatically come with sugar. Oh. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. I was wondering why our sugar was so low. I, I learned that the hard way. I did. It doesn't taste good without the sugar. It's just a flavor packet. We're still recording. Do you have anything to say to the audience? Add sugar to Kool Aid. <laughs> there you go. At least a cup. Fly Dongus' words of wisdom. Oh, flydongus.com. Well, you know. No, flydongus.biz? Just dongus.biz. Oh, dongus.biz. D-O-N-G-U-S dot biz. Fly. Everyone, my husband has a beautiful airline. I will take you to wherever you need to go in the world. Mostly does not crash. Mostly. Yes. Uh, excellent, excellent flying, usually. Uh, can land a 787 in a tiny airport. Free soup on every flight. Free soup on every flight. I mean, dongus.biz. Sweet. All right. So, I mean, we that's... Should talk about, what? We should talk about another movie, John. We should? Well... Is it the one the one my wife and I both loved and are wait, can't wait to watch it on digital and even bought the upcoming 4K Steelbook release? Yes, probably. The Bobby movie? Is it the Bobby? Bobby. Oh, such a great movie. Well, well, well awaited. I don't. I still don't get why they had to. They couldn't be bothered releasing it on digital first. But I mean, if that was their prerogative to put it out in theaters first and then have people wait 
45 some odd days for the digital release okay we we braved we braved uh being stuck in the house we wore our masks we went to the theater we enjoyed ourselves it's it's a movie it it you know you can see it's it's kind of a continuation of the last season because they kept alluding to the fact that the sidewalk out front of the store was breaking I don't know if... Well, Trish, are you behind on this show? Oh, yeah. I don't watch it regularly. But you watched the movie. I did not watch the movie. Oh. Well, I, I won't spoil it then, but basically it, it picks up right after that. And uh, it's got... It, it, it keeps the same... You can tell the animation is definitely beefed up. And uh, the thing that disappointed me and my wife was the fact that there are some good songs in it, but there's only like three songs... And the fact that the animation's a little bit more beefed up, and it it maintains the same silliness that you've come to love from Bob's Burgers, but also uh, a lot of heart. And you find out, and you finally find out why Louise wears the ears. Oh wow! I think that's that's one of the big points to the movie. Well, now I have to see it. Yeah, it, it's out on digital on Tuesday. And then, like I said, I pre-ordered the 4K release on uh, its Best Buy exclusive uh, Steelcase. Because that's a movie I need to own on 4K. <laughs> mm-hmm. And my wife didn't complain, so. Be wife, happy life. Exactly. I'm like, I'm buying this on 4K. She's like, go right ahead. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fault you for spending money on something we have on digital already. Oh, guys, it looks like we've covered everything in just two hours. Um, that ain't bad. I could probably even split this up into two parts if I felt like it. Yeah, maybe if you wanted to. Mm. Um, sure, friend, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Russia, the Netherlands, and Mexico would really appreciate. And the U.S. The U.S. pops in and out every now and again. I guess they're catching up on the... I guess they're catching up on, like, the last two episodes that we did because... We did, like I said at the beginning, we're, we're trying to do quality, not quantity, and I feel like those last two episodes gave a lot of information. Because, yeah. well, I guess last three because we did the one we did the one for when Venture was canceled, and then we did the kind of the the deep dive on Yolo, which was fantastic, and then the last episode where we covered all of the ins and outs about HBO Max and the takeovers and acquisitions and firings and. You know, again, quantity, quality over quantity, and I just remembered <clears throat> something we didn't talk about. What? The Venture Brothers mo- preview for the movie. There was a preview. Oh, the one that aired after Robot Chicken. The that one. Uh, the one. Well, I saw it on Instagram. You'll have it, to you'll uh, have to link it to me because I, I I'm thinking of I something and I don't know if it's the same thing no. that we're that I'm thinking that you're thinking. Oh, it was two weeks ago. It, it had like Hank and his girlfriend were like having a picnic and um who's the tall skinny one? Brock Herbert. What is it? Brock Samson. No, no, no. The brother. Dermot. No. Who's brother? Dean. Dean is like playing like a song for them and everything. I have. I didn't even know this happened. Yeah, I didn't know either. I heard about this one. They had one where they like after Robot Chicken, like they did a puppet show with Doc and Jackson, like that one I saw online. But Venture Brothers, sure, no one tells me anything about Venture Brothers. Let me see if I could link it. Yeah, they did a puppet show with uh, the Monarch and uh, Twenty One. Hmm. Yeah, I just found that one on YouTube. Let's see what is this one. And I'm sure oh. Rilo would have yeah, had it, something about it. There's an article from June 21st about Patrick Warburton talking talking about the movie. Oh yeah, I, I saw that, and that wasn't anything really to. Yeah. It wasn't anything spectacular. He just said, yeah, he wrapped up his lines from the movie. That's cool. So it sounds like that shouldn't be too far behind then. If 
if he were if they're doing it's probably more the animation end at this point and you know how they get with the animation on venture Mm -hmm. so you know if if aqua teen is coming out in november maybe venture is coming out in august of 2025 i don't know (laughs) anyway i mean i mean that's it venture's coming that's it is it's hopeful it is Is there anything else we need to cover? No, I think we got everything. Cool. I mean, and again, if anyone wants to write into us, if you want to, like, like I said at the beginning, if you want to help us out on this, maybe we'll do it more often. If if there's more content, news, and and talent involved in the show, we would do it more often. So if you want to... Send us audition tapes, send us questions, send us news, send us uh, content, send us crazy emails, you know, that don't have anything to do with Adult Swim, that have to do with, you know, Chinese pottery. I don't know. We'll read them. We'll read, we, I actually have a couple of emails we could read, but I don't want to, I usually save them for when we're low on content. Yeah, so, you know, I think we've covered so much today. I think yeah. it's 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 probably good we end now and anyway, podcasts with an S at acpnet.net. You can visit us on the web. I mean, Adults from Central is still a website, but there's nothing there right now. I'm trying to get a website built. If you want to help us build a website, that'd be cool too. Um, acpnet.net is a website I'm trying to keep that updated as much as I can we, we mostly do stuff on Twitch now Twitch TV slash ACP Network uh, Tuesday oh, and also, Thursday nights also we should invite everyone out there to join our Discord our Twitch we do game night every Tuesday and Thursday yep. uh, we play a lot of Rift Tracks we play a lot of Jackbox Yeah. lots of pee pee jokes your car warranty is about to expire you know mm-hmm. bruh we have fun. Yeah. I feel like doing riff tracks right now. Or maybe in a little while. Not Probably not yeah. right now. I need a break. But, uh, yeah, come join us. Come have fun. Otherwise, we'll be back at some other point in time. Like I said, if we have a get, we might have a potential guest coming in sooner than later. So maybe there'll be another episode. Maybe this will be split into two episodes. Mm-hmm. Nah, I, I'm, I'm not going to split this into two episodes. Too much work. <laughs> Exactly. And too much time. Uh, So, yeah, we'll be back at another time and uh, enjoy us. You know, if you're listening to us uh, in, you know, in March of 2023, welcome. Uh, And we'll be back at some other point, you know, if you want to come back in another year from now. So, like, in 2024, we'll be back with a new episode. So, until then, night, everybody. We love you. Brought to you by Dongus Airlines, Dongus.biz. I like money. This has been an Adult Swim Central production. But Andy and his writing partner, writing partner Matt Mariska, who you might remember also from Code Monkeys as Dave, uh, from Dave and Jerry, they're developing a new show that's uh, in the vein of Code Monkeys called... I don't have it listed. Where the hell is my thing? A second ago. Damn it! It's called New York Comic Con. <laughs> it's called HBO Max Order Scavengers Reign. No. It's called Burning Earth. Burn It's called Burning Earth and it's if I'm going to start the whole thing over again. <laughs> <laughs>